Hello. So today we're going to be playing one of my favorite games, and that is Timberborn. So if you haven't played Timberborn before, it's a little bit uh, like a city builder survival game. Similar to something like, say, RimWorld or Banished, where you have to build up your, your economy and city without everybody dying. But it, it takes place in this post-apocalyptic setting where humans are gone and they've been replaced with intelligent beavers who are trying to survive in the aftermath. Um, one of the things I really like about this game is it has a lot of interest in water physics because you have to kind of manage water so that your beavers don't uh, dehydrate or basically die. Um, and water will come and go in spurts with the seasons. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in and create a game. So I'm going to start with folk tales. There's two different kind of factions that you can pick from. There's this more industrial faction and folk tales, which are more of the farmers, a little bit more laid back. So this canyon map looks pretty interesting. I, I'm just kind of looking at it. It looks like there'd be some really cool ways to dam up and get some uh, different flows of water going. Uh, well, the challenge is trying to get up to the top to get this kind of scrap metal. So I'm going to go with the canyon. And name for the settlement. Let's go with something like uh, Whitewater. So we're going to be the settlement of Whitewater. And let's pause this a little bit because as soon as time goes, we're going to run out of time to start building before the next drought comes. As you can see here, very city builder like. We've got kind of our town hall center. And from here, we end up building roads and paths and structures that we build buildings off of. And you can see we've got um, our initial starting settlers, these little beaver down here. They make, they make really nice, friendly noises. Now, like a lot of city builders, we can't direct these people directly. Like, we can only indirectly influence what they do by kind of laying down blueprints. For example, we could put down paths and structures and stuff like that, but I can't tell, you know, uh, Zia here to go do a particular thing. If I zoom out, we can see we've got kind of our large canyon. And we've got water that's kind of coming in, it looks like here, over on the side, we've got some sources of water. And eventually this is gonna start and stop. But you can see wherever the water gets close to, we get nice green kind of fertile land that we can farm and build and do things on. And anything farther away, it's kind of this barren wasteland. And we can't farm or plant anything on there. And so the risk is as soon as this water supplies up, Everything here is going to die if we haven't managed to make a dam for it, and our beavers will die or have to live off of what we've managed to stockpile. And this looks like it's kind of the new stuff, which is uh, what they call bad water. So it looks like this is some other mess, some toxic waste that's coming down. I'm not sure. I wonder if there's some way to eventually destroy that or if we got to live with it forever. You can see it looks like it contaminates this land and then eventually contaminates even the good water like when they mix. It looks kind of mixed in purple there. Okay, so that said, our first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to get some food and water or these people are going to die. And you can see up here we've got our food, so it looks like we've got a little stockpile of food to start and we've got no water. So I think first business for me is I want to go build um, some dams. So let's go ahead and build a road. And let's see. Maybe not a dam. I want to build a water pump so we can pump water so that they can get something to drink. So we're going to start with one here, one little water pump, and off they go. And while we're at it, Let's also make a place for them to start pulling up some of these berries. So let's we'll make a road here and one of these options is to forge. There we go. Gather flag. So you can see here they'll gather everything they can within that radius. So it's good. See, we need a few more workers. And 
Ideally, they should go start. Oh, you know, the other thing we need is we probably need. We don't have any logs. So some of these are probably going to re require logs. So we don't have any logs yet. So let's also go over here and start chopping down some of these trees. Now, something we'll probably want to do pretty soon, or at least I like to do early in the game, is replant the trees. So these trees, I think they eventually come back on your own if you leave some baby ones, but if you just clear cut everything, that's it, they're gone. But eventually you can unlock a way to replant trees with a kind of a forester, which is really good because everything in this game basically requires trees. And so as a resource, it's really good if you can make it uh, renewable. There we go. We finally got somebody going and constructing, and this guy constructing this. So these two don't require anything. They're just kind of like simple gatherers. Oops, did I not make the door? Oh, haha. <laughs> That's probably why. I didn't actually connect the door. There we go. We should have a lumberjack, and now we've got to ask them to cut down some trees. So let's cut down these trees. And the thing we can do, I'm thinking we should do is maybe have a place to stockpile some food. So I notice these gathering places, they'll get a little bit, say, 6 out of 20. But once they hit that 20, they're going to stop gathering food. And so they have this warehouse mechanism where you can store things. And so they kind of divvy it up into categories. There's piles, which are like bulky resources, uh, these warehouses, which are for manufactured resources, and then barrels for liquids. So something like berries, I think that counts as like a good, where the logs and metals and stuff like that would go into the kind of these pallets. So for example, if we wanted someplace to hold all these logs, um, if this ever gets full, they would start overflowing into there. So I'm going to create kind of this starter warehouse. And I also want to leave room for homes later so that we have some place for the beavers to sleep. So let's maybe put a medium warehouse in like this. I want it to be close enough that they can get to it from their homes. The other thing that's going to be top on our priority is to make sure this water dams up, right? And I don't know how long it's going to be. We're only on day one. But ideally, I want to dam it after our pumps. So somewhere down here. Now, early game, we don't really have a whole lot to pick from. The only thing we have is kind of this dam. And if you look, you can see it lets a little bit of water in through the top. So this would only get, I think, the water up to like 75% or like a three, three quarters of the way up, and then it's going to let water go through. So it's, it's okay. Uh, eventually, we'll unlock these other buildings, which let you control how much water you get goes through by raising and lowering it dynamically. And the other thing I'd like to get going eventually, let's wait for these to build is probably somebody starting to research so we can unlock planting our own replacement trees. Priority is let's kind of get these built out and then build a dam, dam over here. Even longer term, I mean, this looks like a pretty nice place. It's like we're going to need a lot more water to live. Like later on, the droughts get longer and longer. But this looks like a really nice place to build a bigger dam. And like if we put a, one of those triple dams all the way up a little bit, you could even build the dam a little bit higher. We could fill out this whole basin and then just kind of let water come out as we need it. Let's speed up through the night. Poor beavers, they gotta sleep outside on the ground. Okay, so he's they're actually good now, so we can have them start storing berries in there. And since everything's kind of gotten through the backlog, let's go ahead and build that first dam. So I want somewhere where it's cheap right now. We can always come back and rebuild this later. But I just want something that's really cheap to build. I 
So you can see they should be able to get to all of these. There's this limit. You have to be within, I think, like 10 steps from a road to build. I don't really want to tear out these bushes. So I'm hoping they can get there. Are we all out of water? No, oh, we should. That needs to pump more. Get back to work. You notice up at the top here, we've got this negative one. I think this marker is how happy my people are. And ideally, you want this to go up. And I think it un unlocks things or you get access to some other benefits as you do. Um, but you can see they're not very happy right now. And right now, it looks like I, ne I need places for them to sleep. Generally, everything else is like bonuses, but you can see if you don't make their basic needs, if they get hungry or thirsty, things start going negative. How are we doing on cut? We've almost cut all the trees that we have access to. I guess we're going to have to cut a little bit more. These would also be good ones to cut because we don't care. We can't regrow those back anymore. So... Maybe what I'll do is... Set up some additional lumber stations up there. And then give these times one some time to regrow. Oops, I almost forgot. You gotta label what you want to cut. See down here, I gotta label the trees to cut. Otherwise, they're not actually gonna do anything. I think these guys are more or less done over there. So I'm gonna... Shut these down, and then that should cause those lumberjacks to go over there. We still have two unemployed people. So I think what I'd like to do next is start building research. Because what I really would like to do is start to replant. Because we need a lot more uh, logs to build stuff. So I really want this. And so I think to do that, we're going to need to build an inventor. And we can kind of kickstart our research here. Let's put two over there. And then after that, I think my other kind of concerns are going to be housing and more reliable food. So these kind of, you'll notice the berries, they should come back every so often, but it's not a really good food source. So what normally you're, you're going to do is you're going to plant more uh, farmhouses and farmhouses you can plant down and you can see they give like this radius of areas where they can plant and you can have your uh, beavers plant carrots wheat stuff like that and then each one of the ones that they can plant is going to have different characteristics like how long it takes to harvest and then how many meals you can kind of get from it so for example something like wheat is really involved because you're going to have to mill it and then bake it versus something like carrots and potato or Carrots are, are really easy because I can just eat them raw. Thinking all this space over here would be good kind of farmland. And I'm liking kind of this grid layout. So let's go ahead and put a farmhouse over here. And I think to start, let's start with a bunch of carrots. Ultimately, I really like potatoes, but you have to be able to cook potatoes first. And I don't think we have, well, we do have grills. Let's let's do a mix of, of carrots and potatoes. Okay, that's looking good. And we have our first dam built. So look at that. So you can see very small change, but if I look at the this kind of water line, you might not have noticed, but before it was somewhere down here, but you see now it's kind of risen up. So what happens is when the next kind of drought hits, it's not going to fall below that line immediately. Um, eventually it will when there's like water evaporation or we slowly pump out the water but this should give us hopefully a few days supply of water in the form of the river even if we haven't say pumped a bunch of water out into barrels so next priority for me is going to be housing 
Because you notice up here in the top left, you'll see it says we've got 11 adults and one children. And the beavers won't have any more babies until they have a place to live. So I, I think the mechanic is that you have to have at least excess beds. And if there's no excess beds, there's not going to be any baby beavers born. And so you can see up here, I don't have any unoccupied beds. So that's it. There's no more, no more beavers being born. So at this point, I think we need to really build more homes. After the farm comes in, like we're going to run out of excess beavers to do extra jobs. So we're going to start needing these, these kids. So we can see that we have three inhabitants per lodge. So we're going to take four lodges just to make house our existing beavers. So we're going to need at least five. Now, one of the things I haven't really taken advantage of yet in the game, but you might have noticed some of these buildings are a little bit more flat than the others. So like this one, you can see the it's got a nice kind of flat area. But you can build very vertical in this game. Um, as long as you can provide the beavers with access to the doors, they don't really care. And so you'll notice a lot of these homes and lodges and warehouses, they can be stacked on top of each other. See, they're flat like that. Now, we don't really have the parts unlocked, but eventually you can unlock these things with research and you can get nice stairs and you can make all sorts of three dimensional kind of buildings and networks. OK, time to come up with a decent enough house layout. So what I'm doing is I, I want to make some room for like stairs later on. And so, so we can maybe stack other buildings on top of here. So I want room for like a stairwell to come up here. That's why I'm giving this little tiny gap. There we go. Much better. So how are we doing with the logging up here? Well, it looks like we've almost exhausted our extra supply of logs here. But I notice our science is getting pretty high. We may actually be able to afford the forester pretty soon, so we can start replanting some trees. We'll look at them go. Unlock. Forester. Bam. Done. Okay, so what I'm thinking is first off we need to, to finish these homes so we can start building our population a little bit. I'm thinking maybe three more beavers. We're probably going to need a little bit more water to support the new population. But then my next kind of project is I want to dam this right here because i'm worried with the extra population we're going to run out of water and i'd really love to be able to control this flow of water here for some extra water during um, a drought i think we're relatively close like we could just build a road over there and maybe make like a, a baby dam to begin with and we could always revisit it later but like ideally i'd love the really tall dam in here, but we don't have enough research for that yet. But if we start it with something like a two-story dam, how much does that cost? Two fifty. It's not really worth the effort yet. Maybe we can at least get a double floodgate at two fifty. So I think to do that, we're first going to need this, a platform. That way we can actually get in there to build, or at least the stairs. So we can build the stairs into the water so that the beavers can get down there to build. And we'll probably need a, a road to get back up there too. So first things first though, let's get that forester going. Oh no, forgot. Forester requires planks to build, and we don't have any planks because those have to be processed. Okay, where is a lumber mill has to process logs? And we're pretty early. We don't have any gears or anything, so we're going to have to have a beaver sit on a, a mechanical like gear and power this thing. Okay. Let's find a temporary kind of spot we can put this that 
doesn't use our valuable green real estate. So let's see, we need a way to power it. And so we're gonna have a power wheel. Like ultimately, we, these are really nice where you have running water wheels where flow in the river will actually power things for you. Now the catch with these is they're only good if the water is actively moving. And so when you have a drought, water stops flowing unless you can manually simulate it with pumps or something else. And if you're not careful, your entire economy can stall during a drought because you can't run your water wheels. You can mix this later on with like different sources of power, like uh, fans and windmills and stuff like that. But it can be something to look out for. I think for now, since we're just starting and we want something, I'm going to do the good old fashioned manual power wheel. And so the way this works is we're going to make a building and then have a beaver run and a hamster wheel next to it to keep it going. Because all we want to do is get enough planks to power this forester. And there you can see we've got our finished wheel and lumber mill. So you can see the way this works. We've got a little path here that leads up into this power wheel. And you can see this guy, he's just started running. And he will produce, I think it's measured in horsepower, so much horsepower that will be sent out. And what's cool in this game is that this power can be transmitted through buildings. So for example, let's say we had two lumber mills and one of these on one side, it could, in theory, go through the building. But one of these looks like it's just enough to power that one lumber mill. And so you can see the lumber mill, it will take a log and convert it into a plank. So we got one guy, he's working here, and he'll convert one log to one plank, and it can hold up to 13 planks in there. So total, we're gonna need seven planks before we can get this lumber mill going. Now, while we're waiting for those planks to be prepared, what I'd like to do is lay out the trees that we're gonna plant. So this game has different types of trees that you can plant. Uh, birch, pine, chestnut, maple, oak. And the big difference between each is how long it takes for the tree to grow and how many logs you get from cutting down the tree. So on one side, you get birch, which is nine days, one log. Pine, which is what we have here, 12 days to two. All the way up to oak, which is 30 days for eight logs. So what I think I'm going to do is make a mix. I'm going to have some trees that are going to be pine trees. So basically replenish what we have. And then the rest, I'm going to do oak so we get them later. Because I think we're going to need a lot of logs um, the later game to build all these extra dam or build this dam up here. So I'm going to temporarily ask them to prioritize cutting these. That way I can plant them with maple. And I'm sure this has been bothering people. I never cut down this tree. I was hoping that it would grow, but I think I'm just going to have them deroot it and then I can make it a field. So I'm going to pull out all these kind of little baby trees in here so that they can be replaced with new oak trees. And now we have our forester. So it looks like the only thing that we're limited by is we need a worker in here. So I'm going to go find something else that we can maybe lower priority of. I see right here, we're not really gathering anything right now. So I'm going to pause the gatherer. And this person should hopefully go become a forester. And when we watch, we can go see our Matuna is going to go plant some of our trees, replacement pine trees for us now. And now that they've started to clear away some space here, I'm going to go ahead and put down some of the oaks. Or at least the order to plant more oaks. Perfect. Now, with that, I think that's a good stopping point for the first episode. I think we're getting pretty close to the first drought. It's because we're on day 12 right now. So I'm pretty sure that in the next few days, 
we're going to have our first drought, which will stop the water here. And we're going to have to see if we can survive the first day. I think things are looking pretty good. I think we've got uh, the start of some food coming in. But for next episode, I think uh, we're going to maybe prepare for that drought, start stockpiling some food, maybe get some potatoes grilled in here so we have a little bit more storage food. And uh, long term, see if we can start damming up that. So hope this was interesting for you. If you'd like to see more Timberborn, feel free to, to comment below. And hope to see you in the next episode.